Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to learn about why Git and then we will learn what is community and what are distributed development etc. My name is Sushant Satish and I'm your trainer for this Microsoft certified Azure DevOps engineer expert certification course. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Switching from a centralized version control system to Git changes the way your development team creates software. And if you are a company that relies on its software for mission critical applications, altering your development workflow impacts your entire business. Developers can gain benefits by moving into Git. First, let's understand what is community. In many circles, Git has come to be the expected version control systems for new projects. If your team is using Git, odds are you won't have to train new hires on your workflow because they will already be familiar with the distributed development. In addition, Git is very popular among open source projects. This means that it's easy to leverage third-party libraries and encourage others to fork your own open source code. Let's talk about distributed development. In TFVC, each developer gets a working copy that points back to a single central repository, Git. However, Git is a distributed version control system. Instead of a working copy, each developer gets their own local repository complete with a full history of commits. Having a full local history makes Git fast since it means that you don't need a network connection to create commits, inspect previous version of a file, or perform differences between commits. Distributed development also makes it easier to scale your engineering team. If someone breaks the production branch in SVN, other developers can't check in their changes until it's fixed. With Git, this kind of blocking doesn't exist. Everybody can continue going about their business in their own local repositories. And similar to feature branches, distributed development creates a more reliable environment. Even if a developer obligates their own repository, they can simply clone someone else's and start afresh. So what is trunk-based development? One of the biggest advantages of Git is its branching capabilities. Unlike centralized version control systems, Git branches are cheap and easy to merge. Trunk-based development provides an isolated environment for every change to your code base. When a developer wants to start working on something, no matter how big or small, they create a new branch. This ensures that the master branch always contains production quality code. Using trunk-based development is not only more reliable than directly editing production code, but it also provides organizational benefits. They let you represent development work at the same granularity as your agile backlog. For example, you might implement a policy where each work item is addressed in its own feature branch. Now let's understand what is pull request. Many source code management tools such as Azure Repos enhance core Git functionality with pull request. A pull request is a way to ask another developer to merge one of your branches into their repository. This not only makes it easier for project leads to keep track of changes, but also let developers initiate discussions around their work before integrating it with the rest of the code base. Since they are essentially a common thread attached to a feature branch, pull requests are extremely versatile. When a developer gets stuck with a hard problem, they can open a pull request to ask for help from the rest of the team. Alternately, junior developers can be confident that they are in destroying the entire project by treating pull request as a formal code review. Let's discuss the faster release cycle. The ultimate result of feature branches, distributed development, pull request, and a stable community is a faster release cycle. 
These capabilities facilitate an agile workflow where developers are encouraged to share smaller changes more frequently. In turn, changes can get pushed down the deployment pipeline faster than the monolithic releases common with centralized version control systems. As you might expect, Git works very well with continuous integration and continuous delivery environments. And Git hooks allow you to run scripts with certain events occur inside of a repository, which lets you automate deployment to your heart's content. You can even build or deploy code from specific branches to different servers. For example, you might want to configure Git to deploy the most recent commit from the developed branches to a test server whenever everyone merges a pull request into it. Combining this kind of build automation with peer review means you have the highest possible confidence in your code as it moves from development to staging to production. There are five common objections I often hear to migrating to Git. Let's look at these five one by one. They are, I can overwrite history. I have large files. I have very large repo. I don't want to use GitHub and there is a steep learning curve. Now let's talk about overwriting history. Git technically does allow you to overwrite history, but like any useful feature, but like any useful feature, if used incorrectly, can cause conflicts. If your teams are careful, they should never have to overwrite history. And if you are synchronizing to Azure repos, you can also add a security rule that prevents developers from overwriting history by using the explicit force push permissions. Every source control system works best when the developers using it understand how it works and which conventions work. While you can't overwrite history with TFVC, you can still overwrite code and do other painful things. Let's discuss about the large files. Git works best with repos that are small and that does not contain large files or binaries. Every time you clone the repo, they get the entire repo with all its history from the first commit. This is great for most situations, but can be frustrating if you have large files. Binary files are even worse since Git just can't optimize how they are stored. That's why Git LFS was created. This lets you separate large files out of your repos and still have all the benefits of versioning and comparing. Also, if you are used to storing compiled binaries in your source repos, stop. Use Azure Artifacts or some other package management tool to store binaries you have source code for. However, teams that have large files like 3D models or other assets, you can use Git LFS to keep your code repos slim and trim. Let's discuss about large repos. But fortunately, the engineers at Microsoft have been on a multi-year journey to convert all of Microsoft source code to Git. Windows team has a repo that's over 300 GB in size, and they use Git for source control. How? They invented Virtual File System or VFS for Git. VFS for Git is a client plugin that lets Git think that it has the entire repo, but only fetches files for the upstream repo while the file is touched. This means that you can clone your giant repo in few seconds. Only when you touch files does Git fetch them down locally. In this way, the Windows team is able to use Git even for their giant repo. Let's discuss Git or GitHub. There is a lot of confusion about Git versus GitHub. Git is a distributed source control system created by Linus Torvalds in 2005 for the Linux kernel. If you create a repo, you have a fully functioning Git repo on your local machine. However, to share the code, you need to pick a central place that developers can use to synchronize their repos. So if I want your changes, you would push your changes to the central repo and I would pull them from there. We are still both working totally disconnected. 
but we are able to share our code via that push pull model github is a cloud service for hosting these sort of centralized repos this is made famous mostly because it's free for open source projects so you can host unlimited public repos you don't have to use github to use git though it's pretty much the de facto platform for open source code they do offer private repos too you can also create git repos in team foundation server and tfs 2015 to tfs 2019 that is renamed to azure devops server recently now let's discuss about the learning curve there is a learning curve if you have never used source control before you are probably better off when learning git i have found that users of centralized source control which is tfvc or subversion battle initially to make the mental shift especially around the branches and synchronizing once developers grok how git branches work and get over the fact that they have to commit and then push they have all the basics they need to be successful in git that concludes this lesson in the next episode i'm going to introduce you to azure repos and github so i will see you in the next video till then take care